Hey guys, this is Thursday, September the 19th. Uh, it's good to be with you today. Uh, this this day, Keenan couldn't be with me today. Usually it's Keenan and I doing this. And so uh, just a little bit ago, I ran into McKenna and I was like, McKenna, do you have, do you have, are you busy? And you were like, not super busy. And I was like, do you have 20 minutes? And you're like, mm -hmm. yes, why? Very cautiously. <laughs> and I was like, now that I have you on the hook, Cut in my office. And then when you got up here, I was like, ha ha, doing a video. So here we are. McKenna's with me today, right? Yes, I am. Yes. <laughs> she loves off the cuff videos with oh, no boy. time to repair whatsoever, That's which right. is what this video is. Um, I hope you've been having a great week just talking about and, and wrestling with considering your mind what it means to be good or to be godly. How do you interact with your community so the kingdom of God can move more uh, through you? I, I just had a chat just a little bit ago with, uh, and we filmed this on Wednesday, you, you know, and so um, this is the day before you'll be seeing this, but I, I just had a chat with somebody uh, today just about um, the the area around where they live and, and the community and their hopes and dreams and goals and I'm super excited, super encouraged that we have people that are connected to us that want to see the kingdom of heaven come near in our neighborhoods and communities. That's kind of a little bit what we're talking about today. And so I'm ready to have this conversation. Are you good to go? Ready? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's just answer questions together. Uh, question number one uh, in the Quest 52 book, chapter 37, uh, is this. Share about your favorite meal. Not what you like to eat, but a memory you made at a specific place and time. Right. I'll go first. Actually, I'll, I'll, I'll do what I said not to do. My favorite kind of meal is cheeseburgers. All right. Second is tacos. Just a little insight into who I am. Uh, but it says not what you like to eat, but maybe a memory you made at a specific place at a specific time. Um, and, you know, surprisingly, when I first read this, I was thinking about how um, this is a hard question to answer. But then I, I quickly came back to moments in my past that I remember well. Uh, maybe one of the clearest times, I was uh, I was in uh, Costa Rica. I love to travel cross culturally, and I'd led a group down to Costa Rica. And uh, one particular meal, um, well, one where we ate when we were there a lot. The, the first night we got there, we got there late. It been a long day of traveling. We got there like at ten thirty at night at this house, and they're like, "Hey, it's time to eat." We're like, "It's time to sleep." They're like, "It's time to eat," and they gave us, I mean, plates like this, mounded up with rice and black beans, and there was so much food. It was so good until it was so painful to keep eating, but we kept going because it was so good. Um, but the meal that I remember the most, uh, there was a, um, a place, a, a kitchen, where people would go to get food, almost uh, like a, I don't think like a soup kitchen, or like a place to feed people. And, and we were gonna go and serve this meal uh, every, every once in a while. This is the first time we went to this place. And we show up there, we hang out, and, and we get there in the morning early, ready to cook, and our, our sleeves are rolled up, and we're ready to go, you know, and, and we're like, there's a, there's a couple of ladies here that don't speak English. Uh, there's a bunch of, of, of gringos here, uh, Americans that don't speak Spanish. And we're like, what's going on? What's happening? Uh, and finally, we found out that, you know, the food hadn't arrived yet. We're like, oh, no problem. So we just kind of sit back and wait. And the food never shows up. And we're like, where's the food? And this lady's like, it'll come. God sends the food. Like. God sends the food? She's like, yeah, God sends the food. We're like, when When does God send the food usually? She's like, we never know. It'll be in time. We're like, what in the world? And would you believe it? As the morning went on, uh, people would just come by and they would walk by with a, a sack of carrots. We had extra carrots in our in our crop today or our harvest. You know, person had a bag of potatoes. This one had a bunch of this, that one a bunch of that. They just kind of come by and just drop stuff off. And we're asking the lady, like, did, did you know they were bringing this? She's like, no, but God did. Like, that's amazing. And would you know, enough food came in that we filled this room. There were probably 40 or 50 people came in to eat, not counting us that were cooking, that came in to eat and to hang out. And I will just never forget that meal as we gave thanks to God for bringing us the food and time to eat it. And it sticks out forever. So what, what do you think? About your answers or no, my no, own no. answers? No, no, no. Yeah, you can... <laughs> Feel free, McKenna, whenever you want to critique or judge me at all, go, go for it, right? Oh, um, sure. Yes. But what is, what's, what's a meal you remember? 
Well, uh, I thought about a couple years ago, my Thanksgiving plans fell through to spend it with my family. So I was really grateful to have my friends around and they invited me to a big old Thanksgiving dinner with them the day after Thanksgiving, but you know, whatever. Um, and of course, Thanksgiving food is great, but it really wasn't about the food at all. It was just the fact that um, a big old meal could be had with my friends and have a bit of community there. I also think about uh, the Ninos mission trip this past yeah. summer, yeah. where many of those nights we would just go to one of the children's homes and eat dinner with them. And again, the food was cool. It was cool to have dishes that I normally wouldn't, uh, but it really was more about spending the time with people. It was awesome. It's the people, right? Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. Ninos, Costa Rica. It's the meal. Uh, you reminded me actually of another meal, another meal uh, that came to mind when you said Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. I remembered back uh, in the Thanksgiving of right around the year, oh my, 2007 maybe, somewhere in there. It's a while ago. Um, we'd gone, we, we lived in Ohio at the time, we'd gone to uh, a town just across the Kentucky border. Uh, Thanksgiving day afternoon, we'd gone down um, to go to a movie. So we watched a movie and, and we left the movie and we're like, you know, we're kind of hungry. Where are we gonna eat at? And it had not, uh, we were younger. Grace and I were much younger at the time and we hadn't thought things through. We're like, nowhere's open on Thanksgiving. You can't just go to a restaurant on Thanksgiving. So like, where are we gonna go eat at? And we're, we're looking around. There was one restaurant open in this little town in Kentucky. One restaurant. Hardee's. <laughs> Hardee's was go. open. And so we went across the street from the movie theater, this one Hardee's. It was open. And we went in there. And at Hardee's, there were two guys that were working, two men. And they did not want to be there. They were mm. very clear about that. And they were working and making food. And we ordered. And then we sat down and we waited. Uh, we were at that Hardee's for over two and a half hours. Because the drive through line, because their own place is open, the drive through line was out and around down the highway outside, and their company policy is drive through can't be in the road, they have to go first. So we sat and waited forever. Um, and it was frustrating, and then it was comical, and then it was more frustrating again, and then it became <laughs> part of just the, the lore of our family. Mm. And But I'll never forget it because, uh, you know, my wife, our kids, we, we had such a good time just laughing and being there. It was not about the food, it's about the people, always. Meals are about that, right? Yeah. Question number two, let's go to that. Why are meals so important for building relationships with people? You know, I just recently heard uh, someone say, um, I forget, it might have been, uh, might have been one, of our, one of our staff here, um, said that meals uh, just kind of, they, they pull down uh, the mask. They pull, they pull off the protective layer and they force you to be vulnerable while you're eating you're just you're vulnerable and it's it's hard to argue or be defensive when you're when you're eating good food and hanging out together and and then telling stories and laughing even that way and it allows us to get to a deeper relational level because we're sharing a meal together um you know i i've, I've maybe heard me say before too that um if you take the bible you know the, the, this is not the bible but if it were and you had the bible that was maybe it said this thick or whatever if you took out all the moments that we met the people met god on mountaintops or they met around meals, the Bible ends up being a whole lot smaller because there's so much time at meals and they're powerful times of relationship. Um, what, what, do you, what do you think? Um, well, based on what you just said about the waiting for God to provide the food, I think part of it is also just being able to be with others as you experience the Lord providing your daily bread, you know? Just um, knowing that you can't sustain yourselves without food, but also having that as a communal thing to experience. Yeah, yeah, it's good. So, so meals are incredibly, uh, you know, communal, that word, that, that time around, uh, which reminds me then of, of communion, right? Mm -hmm. When we gather together, we have communion every time we gather. And, and uh, I, I really, um, I enjoy our communion time where we take it together in the, in the auditorium together. We remember what Jesus did, and then we commit ourselves to the mission of the kingdom too, the, to the, the family of the kingdom. But I, I have really, uh, I've recently been really enjoying the way we do communion at North Heights. Mm -hmm. We do it a little differently at North Heights than we do at Carl Junction, mainly because we have more space in the room. There's more space to move around. And uh, can you describe how we do that at North Heights? Well, yeah. 
So uh, it's still after the sermon like normal, but since we have a smaller group and more space, like Adam said, instead of the trays being passed around and everyone just kind of to themselves praying with the communion, we actually get up and go with groups or just we find someone next to us and go up to the table where the trays are and we pray together and just take the communion as a group instead of by ourselves. Yeah, it's just a really, really powerful way to, to gather and to do that. and. Um, it's all because of the, the family, the people. Meals, communion is a meal. Um, it's about, about the people that are involved. Um, so I love that. Uh, question number three. Did you grow up in a church that had external markers of morality, ways to signal your righteousness? What were they? Um, you know, this is a tough one uh, because it's, it's hard to look back. And, and label these. And, and what I absolutely don't want to do, because uh, Connect Christian Church is the church I grew up in, and I never want to be, be negative, even verging on that at all about our church. And, um, so it's hard a little bit, but, but I can tell you, um, you know, churches that I've been a part of um, have some unwritten rules of behavior, which might be like morality or things. Uh, some things silly, like don't run in church. Or don't wear hats in the sanctuary, mm -hmm. or these kind of things, right? Um, things that I'm not sure we really see all that in scripture necessarily, but it's ways to um, uh, to mark that we are the right way to be to be in church, right? Um, do you, Do you have any thoughts? The only thing that really comes to mind off the top of my head is uh, when I was really little. The church that my family went to at the time, it was certainly the type where everyone who went to church had to dress up really nice and make oh. sure everyone looks all prim and proper. Don't do anything that's unladylike if you're a little girl. That's unheard of. So things like that, just very proper behavior and put on your best for the Lord, even though, you know, he's with you all the time. <laughs> yes. As, uh, yeah, I'd forgotten that. So same for me, like growing up, like um, the little boy ties, like we wore these things on uh, these little things to dress up certain ways. And um, uh, in our church now, even um, when growing up, this is a bigger thing for me when I was one of the kids, but um, we have in our kids ministry space where they gather on Sundays in Carl Junction, um, there are some poles in the middle of the room that look like the perfect thing for the kids to hang on to and run around real fast with their hands moving. When that happens, it sounds like, uh, I don't know what, what, uh, almost like, uh, crazy whales, like deranged whales, um, through the floor. It's, <laughs> it's a wild sound. Um, we highly discourage that. Um, but there are markers on behavior for kids and for, for adults too. Like, yeah. um, I've been a part of churches where, um, uh, actually, I was not a part of this church. I have a friend who was a part of a church that uh, when you would join the church, that particular church, um, you would sit down with uh, part of the membership joining process, um, which we don't do a lot of that. We just consider you, if you've uh, been following Jesus, you're here, you're a member. But um, the the church, when you sit down to become a member, they would have you fill a form out, like um, income and different things, so they could help you know how much money you should be giving to the church. And I'm like, hmm. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Um, because I think everything we see in the Bible says that we should give out of joy and generosity and by choice, not out of duty. And but sometimes churches have used things like giving money, uh, behavior, dress, uh, the way we look, the way we clothe ourselves. They've used these like markers of morality. Um, um, you know, um, Alcohol is one of those things we've talked about. Um, uh, we're not talked about a lot here, but um, it is talked about. When I was growing up, uh, Christians didn't at least never never admitted to drinking alcohol at all. It's become more okay now, kind of to talk about that. Alcohol or being drunk and is is a sin. That's we don't do that. Um, but it's become more talked about, like to have a drink here and there. And um, I don't I don't drink. I don't know if you do, but um, but that's become more commonplace. Things have changed a little bit in markers of morality. But what we understand is that God called us to godliness, not to behavior modification. So if you are trying to check off boxes, whatever it might be, uh, to behave a certain way, maybe you want to reconsider um, the, the method you're going about to follow Jesus. Uh, number four, how could you use meals to open the door to a relationship with someone who is far from God? Um, I don't know. 
uh, it seems uh, almost like an obvious thing for me. I have them. <laughs> I, I, I have meals. I, I don't there know. You what go. do you think? I mean, um, I mean, yeah. So I just think about it in the sense of like you're filling a need for someone else if yeah. they're you know maybe low on time or something if you are also low on time you don't have to cook just go somewhere to eat with this person and uh that seems like since you both need food it's an easy way to open the door just to have conversation and fill the time while you're eating to just get to know each other better it's just real simple things like that but yeah yeah, I regularly meet people at coffee shops or, um, you know, for lunch somewhere or whatever, and uh, for breakfast maybe sometimes, and um, Taco Bell even. I mean, we uh, because when you eat or when you share a drink or when you hang out at the coffee place, it, it's, it, it lowers barriers for conversation, for relationship. And we believe, I believe, that relationship is the soil where the kingdom of heaven grows in within us and so uh in our relationship that's where the kingdom grows between us right there and your friendship and your neighbors and your neighborhood your community your workplace that's where it's going to grow so maybe consider maybe consider using meals which you're going to eat anyway use your meal as a tool to help somebody else get to know jesus right um and just see if maybe jesus can do something uh redemptive and something incredible in that eating of a meal with somebody um, and let me know how it goes. We'd love to celebrate that with you. Mm -hmm. right. uh, looking ahead to things, um, we have uh, the Big Serve weekend coming up, October 5th and 6th, 5th for North Heights and 6th for Carl Junction. That's coming up soon. Uh, hopefully you've been letting us know you're going to be a part of that. If not, man, this weekend when you are gathered with us, sign up on one of the little papers so we can plan a project for you. You can be part of it. Um, you can do that. If you can't serve or you're not going to serve for some reason or other, but you want to join for worship still, we're going to gather at North Heights that night outside at 6 p.m. on the 5th. Instead of inside, it'll be the same location as outside. And on the 6th in Carl Junction, we're going to gather at the Carl Junction Junior High School at 930. Um, that service will be just one gathering uh, inside the building right there. And it's it's common. Uh, people will come to the gathering for worship and then go um, before the serving starts. So if that's what you need to do, don't feel bad about that. That's okay. I would love for you to join us together to worship, to hear the Word of God, to take communion together. We'll do communion that day in a, uh, a new way as well. And um, you'll get to be able to be with us here. Okay. Um, I'd love for you to do that. Um, this weekend, coming up right away, uh, one of my good friends, Greg, is going to be sharing a message. Uh, Greg Morris, he's been part of our church for a long time, uh, actually teaches a class on Sunday mornings at 9.30. Uh, it's one of our essential classes, and he's going to be sharing the word in a message this weekend um, here at Carl Junction. At North Heights, um, if you're part of the campus, then you hopefully know already, this is the community night, so um, it'll be a different kind of gathering from 5 to 7 that night, um, spending time that way. So hopefully you'll join us for that, uh, Carl Junction Sunday morning as well. Uh, before we're sent, can you just pray for us? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's pray. Dear God, I'm so, so grateful to you for the way that you are always at work in all of our lives and um, building your kingdom between the relationships that happen among us. I ask that you would just help us to see every little thing, not just meals, but any little opportunity to grow relationships and bring people closer to you. Just open our eyes to them and humble our hearts so that we can just follow obediently whatever you have for us to do. We love you very much. It's in your holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that. I hope this has been a helpful and encouraging conversation. I hope this week and going toward the weekend, you will have great meals with people and great uh, conversations, building relationships that point to Jesus. And church, until we see you again, you are sent.